was we were not going to have a meeting next month, and now we are. Okay. But I mean, they're not going to rewrite the bylaws <laughs> for us in the uh, interim between I, now and I don't and know, our but we could meeting. take a very quick look at her report. Um, I'm the just first, looking down at, on page five. Yes, the first item she has on there is the 4110 master plan. Um, the next steps are the consultant and the staff will be finalizing the master plan and uh, priority recommendations. And on June the 9th, DPZ will be presenting the final master plan to the CRA board for consideration. So that appears to be informational to you. Um, the next is the housing affordability study. Um, at this point, the CRA will be providing staff direction on any further initiatives or budget items. Um, the next item she has is her Gulf Shore Playhouse garage project. Um, just again, informational on May the 18th, um, CRA and the city council, they did approve the design concept. And in December of 2022, um, the city council will be reviewing and hopefully approving the complete design. Um, the next one is the Fifth Avenue South Streetscape and Sugden Theater Plaza Improvements. Um, the, on May 11th, this is informational. The Planning Advisory Board recommended approval of the Fifth Avenue South Overlay District. And in June, uh, the City Council will be considering an amendment to the Fifth Avenue South Overlay District. Um, as far as the neighborhood uh, plans, uh, there was discussion of the 10th Street North landscaping and irrigation improvements, which you've heard today. Um, and then the last item she has is parking on 3rd Avenue North. Um, the next steps being uh, design and construction in July of August. So it doesn't look like there was anything that was time sensitive other than the item that Mr. Shugart brought up. Okay. The only thing, the one I was looking at is at the very end of, of the last sentence on page five where it talks about crab bylaws. Oh, I'm sorry. They I didn't. Page didn't five. Oh. If I can paraphrase it, they really didn't like our suggestion that, that maybe we we should ask them uh, to have a joint meeting once a year. Uh, but what it calls for in the last sentence is for our chair who would attend a CRA, CRA meeting and discuss our request for a joint meeting. So if I understand that, it, it would be up to our chair to go to them at one of their meetings and request, you know, at some point in time, that we have a joint meeting and propo maybe propose a date or let them propose a date to where we have a joint meeting. Right, so that was, Anita and I have been in discussions about that. Um, I think if this board decides that that's necessary um, or wanted, then we'll, we'll have a discussion on that. Okay, um, I do know the past chair who happens to be here. Uh, I think Quimby did that one, uh, she did one. Uh, you did a CRA report. Uh, as the chair, or you did a CRA, you did a report to the CRA as chair of the CRAB. Uh, Anita and I have had conversations about that. I reviewed uh, the Quimby's presentation, and, and to be honest, I, I let Anita know that I, I don't feel that that's in the best use of the CRA's time or the or the CRAB's time. And the reason for that is because every one of our meetings is televised and recorded and they get an outline of every single one of our meetings from Anita of exactly what we discussed and what we recommended. So I said I'm open to any clarification they may need, but in the interest of everyone's um, time, uh, I don't see that that would be like a monthly or, and maybe we're in discussions now. Uh, we may uh, talk to uh, Mr. McCabe as well, just to make sure we're helping them along the best we can, but that was kind of my feedback to Anita. Anita and I are going back and forth on what the CRA may may want us to do, but I'm always open to any time uh, that we would want to have a uh, maybe a workshop or something, I'll be happy to go in front of the CRA and request that on behalf of the board, so. Yeah, thank you. So do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Can we do an all in favor, Allie? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed?
Okay, call to order. Okay, welcome to today's meeting. If you wish to address the board regarding an item listed on this agenda, please complete a registration form at the rear of the room and place it in the speaker request box located on the dais prior to consideration of that item. We ask that speakers limit their comments to seven minutes and that large groups name a spokesperson whenever possible. Thank you for your interest and participation in city government. Roll call, please. Can we swear in the newly reappointed members, please? Good morning, Jessica Rosenberg, Deputy City Clerk. Recently, the City Council reappointed members Luke Fredrickson and Lindsay Bullock. I'm going to go ahead and swear you in. Uh, please raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, and then say your name. I, I Lindsay Bullock. Solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. I will uphold the laws of the United States. I will uphold the laws of the United States. And the state of Florida. And the state of Florida. That I will in all respects. That I will in all respects. Observe the provisions of the Charter. Observe the provisions of the Charter. And ordinances of the City of Naples. And ordinances of the City of Naples. And will faithfully perform. As will faithfully perform. The duties of the Office of Design Review Board member. The duties of the Office of the Design Review Board. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Roll call, please. Chair Ruby. Absent. Vice Chair Bullock. Present. Member Drapesy. Present. Member Fredrickson. Present. Member Orion. Present. Alternate Member Fawcett. Present. Thank you. All right. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, are there any changes to the agenda? I believe we have one. I believe item 7C has been uh, continued. Correct. Okay. But we would ask that we make a motion. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter because it is not, con never mind. Okay. Not continued to a time and date certain, so. Very good. Okay. May I have an approval of minutes for the April Design Review Board workshop meeting? A motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, is there any public comment regarding any other items that are not on today's agenda? Seeing none, we move on to the first item, 7A, petition 20-DRB2, a resolution determining a revision to petition 20-DRB2 for final design review to the, pr to the previously approved project, which includes a new church education and administration building for St. William Catholic Church on the property owned by Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice, a corporation sole and located at 750 Seagate Drive. Um, may I have everyone testifying sworn in? If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will be giving is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Okay, may I have everyone's disclosures? Uh, I'm familiar with the site and have reviewed the application. I have visited the site and reviewed the application. I am very familiar with the site and have also reviewed the application. I have visited the site and reviewed the application. I'm familiar with the site and have reviewed the application. Okay, gentlemen. Good morning, Adrian Carapici, AM Design Group. I have here with me uh, Megan Gula with AM Design and Mike Byrne with? Environmental Design Studio. All right. Uh, Michael is the landscape architect. We're here to present uh, some modification changes that uh, were done to the landscaping on the south part of the property. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is um, the the site plan, the overall site plan for the property. Uh, nothing has been modified with respect to the previous application that was approved uh, a year and a half ago or a few uh, months ago. But 
there has been some landscape modification on the south portion of the parking area uh, between our property and the neighbor uh, property to the south. So this is the west portion of the property. Mike would touch on the actual changes that occurred over the construction um, of that landscape buffer to the south. Mike? Yeah, in a nutshell, what has happened is uh, the original design had a row of Calusia as our backdrop. In front of that, we had variegated arbicola, and in front of that, we had wart fern, which was a nice layering. And then on a 25-foot stagger all the way down the south property line, from west to east, we had mahogany trees that w were going to be the, the tertiary buffer at the top of it. As this thing started going in the ground, uh, the, the landscape contractor got a little ticklish about some power lines that were in the area. Namely, they were about eight foot to the south of our property line, but he was still um, a little bit um, concerned about, as our canopy trees grew, what would happen to those power lines. Um, and he said he wasn't going to install them until he got a letter from the city or he got a letter from FPNL. So I called the city and talked to uh, one of the staff members, and what she told me is that she really wasn't in the position to give a letter of that kind, and that would be an FPL thing. So I called up FPL and talked to a gentleman there, and he basically said that he would prefer us not to plant the canopy trees because over the course of time, they didn't want to deal with the canopy in the wires. So we said, fine, being good neighbors, and also because we were having some issues and a little bit of blowback from neighbors behind about making sure that we were buffering correctly our building, uh, we decided to um, change the south buffer. In the south buffer, there are um, three areas, I'll let you fix that. There's three areas that were kind of open corridors or view corridors from the south residence to our property. And then there was two or three areas that had actual significant buffers on their side, which were namely fishtails, areca palms, and other sundry vegetation that pr pretty much gave them a 20 to 25 foot buffer into our building. So what we did in the areas that there was a true buffer already present, we took our existing plan, we downsized the mahoganies to silver button wood trees um, to keep them out of the power lines, but we kept the, the layering as we originally uh, um, designed it. In the areas where there was an open <laughs> corridor, we decided because we, we wanted to shut that down right away, we actually installed uh, 14 to 16 foot areca palms in those areas and then, and then turned around and did, did the uh, variegated arbicole in front of those. So we still have some layering and we still have the wart fern in front of that to give us a nice layering effect, but to circumvent the, the canopy problem that we were having, uh, we put in the areca palms. And it seemed like from everybody's standpoint, that seemed to make a lot of sense. And it seemed to keep the neighbors on the south side pretty happy as well. Okay. Any questions? Uh, staff report. Good morning, Margaret Perry from City of Naples Planning Department. My credentials are on file for this particular petition. Item 7A is a request for a revision to a previously approved project for St. William Catholic Church Education and Administration Center located at 750 Seagate Drive. The DRB gave final approval of this project in, on February 26, 2020. Um, the contractor for this project attempted to schedule a DRB inspection, at which time I said, first we need the certification of the landscaping, and it was determined that the landscaping installed was not as approved by DRB, so hence they needed to come back for further DRB review. The petitioner pros, proposes changes to the originally approved project as follows. The elimination of the solar panel area over the parking, the addition of a sculpture area on the west side of the building with revised landscaping in this area, change to the mechanical pad located at the southeast corner of the site with revised landscaping, the changing of planting materials on the southern border from a row of live oak trees is what DRB approved to plantings that will not interfere with the overhead power lines and the change of species of various trees and palms within the site. Staff has reviewed the requested changes um, per the criteria of section 50-241 in the design review handbook 
and finds that the criteria have been met. Should the DRB approve this requested change, changes, staff recommends the following conditions. All signage will be required to comply with the regulations of Chapter 50 of the Code of Ordinances. Once again, the landscape architect shall provide a letter of certification if approved the landscaping today that what was installed is what it was approved. And finally, if the proposed sculpture artwork area to be located on the west side of the site is proposed to meet the public art requirement and a refund of the public art fee is requested, the artwork must be reviewed by the Public Art Advisory Committee and approved by City Council. And staff is available for any questions. Okay. Um, is there any public comment? Seeing none, uh, we can start our discussion. Luke, would you like to start? Sure. I don't have too many questions. I think it's, they're good improvements. I think it's better for the neighborhood. You've been very careful to make the neighbors happy, which is very important. One question I had, and I didn't, we didn't really get it in the presentation, is where is the location for the art at the west side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna attempt to point to it. It's right over in this area. If you can follow, I got gotcha. you. on the screen, right? Okay, yeah. So you have it's the pavers. Clearly identified, clearly um, yeah, visible. Right. From the both sides of the sidewalks, both streets. Yeah, I think your the replacement plantings is is actually an improvement, especially for keeping in mind the utilities and and power lines. So that's my only comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I agree with Luke. I think you took an opportunity. We killed two birds with one stone, figuratively speaking, and I think it's always good when everyone's um, cohesive. I am going to defer um, the rest of my comments to the specialist here, David, um, for the landscape expert. Um, I'll just echo Member Fredrickson um, and Ms. Lindsay in that I think that, you know, by engaging you know, a multi-stem, you know, um, silver buttonwood tree or just a single, you know, a standard is just a really beautiful way to use that plant. A lot of people use it as shrubs. Um, the silver buttonwood looks beautiful as a tree. I think that's a, you know, I think the modifications you're making to ameliorate the issue, which is a big one with the power lines, is a, like, just as mentioned, an improvement. Um, I think in addition to the a sculpture to the space is wonderful. I remember this space real well. I grew up in this church, so it's just fun to see that these um, evolutions are happening with such care for the community and, you know, the respect for the building at whole. So, yeah, I, I like it a great deal. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you. I don't have any further comments. Uh, that other than what's already been expressed. So I'm gonna to defer to our landscape architect, David Trapesey. <laughs> Hello, um, St. William Church does things very nicely and, uh, and this included. Um, is the green area water retention, detention? Yes. It'll, it'll be sodded? It is sodded. And, uh, and it'll be used for gatherers and stuff when it's not raining? Uh, I don't think so because there are some, um, uh, the storm structure areas are pretty invasive to the space for anybody to use it for any other purpose. I see. It's just a good looking surface. Uh, it looks well, it presents well, but I don't think it's big enough, you know, to be used for any other thing. Not to mention that it's, it's about a couple of feet lower. Right, thank you. Uh, the only uh, other thing I have, and. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a requirement with the city. I'm, I'm, I'm new on this board. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, this street uh, entry points, exit points, um, did, um, so, like in the county, they mark uh, uh, side distance triangles on the plans. They have, they have to re, uh, retain the height uh, below 30 inches and below eight foot. And I don't know, uh, right yet if the city requires that but that would be um, I think would be a good inclusion on the site plan is to uh, uh, indicate the site distance triangles okay. and that's really all I have they're not really required to be shown but I took you know uh, 
notice of that my, myself uh, when placing plant material. And the, the, the actual entrances where the cars pull out and go past the landscaping, they're still about 20 to 25 feet away from the road. So when, it's, when the cars get out, um, um, they, they have really nice sight lines. Right, right, I can see that. But later down the line, you know, with maintenance and stuff, uh, they may, that might get out of uh, control, but uh, it looks good. Though. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion, or do I hear a motion? Um, I'd like to motion to uh, approve the revision to the petition 20-DRB2 uh, for final approval. The design changes uh, previously approved project, which includes a north, a new church education and administrative building for St. William Catholic Church on the property owned by Frank J. Dwayne Bishop of the Diocese of Venice with staff conditions. I'll second. Roll call. Vice Chair Bullock. Yes. Member Drapesy. Um, can, can we amend that to include sight distance triangles? Well, we're in the middle of a vote. Um, so the amendment should have been made during the motion that was made um, before the second. Um, so at this point, the answer would be no, you can't amend it at this point um, because you're voting on it as is with the conditions that are stated. I see. If this uh, vote were to fail, it could come back and then a subsequent motion could be made to include the additional conditions. Oh. Uh, well, I, I oppose. Okay. Alternate member Fawcett. I approve. Member Fredrickson. Approve. Member Orion. Um, I'm inclined to approve, but what are site line landscape triangles? Like uh, they're, they're um, so what you can see oncoming traffic approaching when you're pulling out onto a, a roadway and uh, it requires the vegetation to be uh, under 30 inches and above eight foot. So, so this, is, clear, so clear this isn't just a graphic representation on a plan. This is actually a three-dimensional concept to protect pedestrians from roadway traffic. Yes, and uh, the, the reason to put it on a plan is for liability in the future. Case are those safety measures that are um, in play when those are integrated? You know, are those in this? Miss Orion, just not I'm going to interrupt oh, you because unfortunately we okay. are in the middle of a vote. I'm sorry, you're just um, uh, and and you do have other options yeah. even after the vote is taken. If a vote is made to reconsider. Um, you could have discussion after the vote is taken, and if there's a vote to recons uh, a motion to reconsider, we can kind of do a do-over. Yes, ma'am. If if um, you know the majority feels that additional conditions are needed, yeah, but I'm right now we're labor the point, but I just didn't know. Yeah. That I, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Just we're just in that, that formal yes, process right now. No, that I'll, I'll approve right now. Okay. If there's a space to talk either now or later. So after the vote, okay. you can have that discussion. I'm sorry about I, that. No, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this no, is the formal about. voting yes, component. Yes, Absolutely. Okay. Very good. It's approved. Okay. Okay. So now, go ahead. So now. So what exactly is it? So uh, in spite of not being graphically represented on the site plan, is it functionally integrated into the design that they've proposed? May I say something? Yes, sir. There's a whole set of civil plans that haven't been reviewed. And normally, in my experience, the uh, triangle uh, line of sight is included in the civil plans. And they weren't presented here. I'm looking at them. I don't see them on here. But normally, that's something that is uh, handled Integrated. by uh, code. So that's a regulatory code thing. So in terms of that pedestrian safety, that's integrated into this plan proposal. Perfect. Okay. That was my question. I thank you for the time to help me understand. It, it's obvious that he has considered the site as his triangles. The problem is, it's in the future, maintenance would not, uh, they would not know. Oh, I see. So, in, in, by integrating it in the plan, so perhaps that's a discussion when we do the rewrite. Sure. That's where I, I think okay. it's just uh, we can throw it to staff. I would imagine staff does that review before it gets to us. Mm. 
Is that the yes, case? Yes, okay. this, this project went totally through the site plan process. Okay, okay. perfect. Okay, thank you for your time, y'all, for clarifying it's, it's that. It's a nice plan. I, I didn't mean to uh, propose it. It's only, uh, I, I tried to get site distance triangles included. Oh. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item, 7B, 22-DRB10, a resolution determining petition 22-DRB10 for final design review for two single-family residences with a uni unified architectural theme on property owned by 845 11th Avenue South, LLC, and located at 845 11th Avenue South, um, presented by I Mark and John. John. Um, and Christian. Madam Chair, may I just, uh, from a procedural perspective, yes. um, if I can just elaborate a little bit um, for the benefit of everyone. Um, so when a motion is made, um, there's a proponent that wants to move the item forward. At that point, we're looking for a second because a second then would indicate at least two of the five have an interest in moving forward with that motion. Sometimes there is no second. And at that point, the idea or the motion that's made is, is just Correct. dead <laughs> at that point. No when point. there is a second, then that is the opportunity to engage in conversation and discussion. Um, if there are additional um, conditions or requirements or questions uh, as to ambiguity or not. But once the formal vote begins, then it is kind of a, a formal process that uh, discussion is really not appropriate at that time. Um, once the vote is made, however, there is the opportunity within the same meeting uh, to have a motion for reconsideration. And the motion for reconsideration must be made by the individual who's on the prevailing side. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that so, so we will all Thank be on you. the same page with that. <laughs> Definitely appreciate but, it. But the good discussion is really after the second. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if the motion is made and, and you know the majority of you do not believe that the motion has merit to move forward, then there should be no second. And then that means no more discussion and the motion dies. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that said, thank you for the opportunity to just that little clarification, yeah, we, and I guess we can move on. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Oh yes, all swear in, all testifying, please be sworn in. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. May I have disclosures? I'm familiar with the site and have reviewed the application. I too am familiar with the site and reviewed the application. I'm familiar with the site and reviewed the application. I'm familiar with the site and have reviewed the application. I've reviewed the application. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for the record, Mark McLean, Studio Director, MHK Architecture and Planning, 2059 Tamiami Trail East. Um, I bring with me today Christian Andrea from ALD and John Ogeron is our uh, residential director at MHK, so hopefully you guys will be seeing more of him in the coming future. Uh, the project we bring before you today is 845 11th Avenue South. It is a R3 T12 lot split that has been through all of the public approvals and has council's approval. Um, at that, I'm going to kind of just turn it over to John to go ahead and present the, the site plan and the information to you. Good morning, thank you for having me, John Orgren. Um, uh, we're just gonna quickly present some of the uh, architectural concepts in the project. So it is uh, a pair of homes. Um, we have made them look as different as we could. They're, they're mirrored uh, one from the other, so their pools are opposite from each other and not um, sharing the, the same space um, in the elevations. Um, there are also some changes from one to the other here. We're presenting them side by, by side in line drawings, but I'll, I'll forward ahead to the renderings, which are a little easier to explain. Um, so even though they are uh, similar in floor plan, the elevations are quite different in that uh, the one on the left has a, a gable, the one on the right has a uh, awning type of roof. The windows are uh, completely different arrangements. Um, the front doors have different, uh, one has a shed roof over it, the other has a balcony, and the, the towers are articulated differently in terms of the windows and roof detailing, um, shutters and other details. 
even on the alley, we've, we've created a few differences. Um, the white color makes them feel a little bit the same. That's just the style these days. White is the most popular selection, but uh, we have on the, on the home on the right, we've got a trellis over the garage doors. Um, the one on the right, sorry, has, has uh, lights and, um, and a bit of a higher roof, a uh, steeper pitch to go along with the style of the rest of that home. I think some of the more uh, interesting images are uh, in the context of the neighboring buildings where we can see these homes bring the scale down and really add a neat variety to the neighborhood um, as opposed to the larger, uh, the larger structures to the left and right of them. Uh, other than that, uh, we have some landscape drawings. Good morning, Christian Andrea, landscape architect with Architecture Land Design 2780 South Horseshoe. Uh, this is the proposed hardscape plan, so you can, um, we have two driveways, and then once we get into private property, we've created a little grass strip underneath the parking to kind of reduce the pavement mass. Um, both entries are slightly different. Um, we tried to split the driveways as far, as far apart as possible, but we have a catch basin to the west and a catch basin to the east that's kind of inhibiting where we place it. So this walkway system accesses off the left side a little bit. This other one kind of walks more centrally into the property created a little stepping stone path for service to the rear yards and the courtyard side of the home. And the alley side of the property has a functional driveway that accesses the garages. Um, inside the, and these are just some cross section that shows the relationships of the grades and whatnot. Um, these patio areas are slightly raised as we terrace down from the property elevation down to grade. And there's a series of stairs that get us there. Um, as John indicated, they're uh, symmetrical, but they're kind of opposite. So quite often pools are abutting each other. In this case, we have the opposite condition where we have a landscape strip between the properties, fireplaces, and then the pools to the opposite sides. Uh, this is an enlargement of the pool. Plans rotated, obviously. The uh, wet wall water features along the garage on both pools, a spa, and then a small pool element in here couple stairs coming down to a lower patio area and then a couple more stairs getting down to grade as we approach the alley side and then stepping stones back out to the street and they're symmetrical on each other. Our landscape plan um, provided uh, some variety. Uh, we've incorporated some flowering trees. This is a uh, called a vera wood, a yellow flowering tree. On the opposite corner we have a red flowering powder puff. In the middle area here, this is a large mature live oak to create some canopy and a sense of streetscape. Um, we have uh, some Montgomery palms. This triple symbol here represents a Montgomery palm flanking here and there. Oops, go back. Um, this corner tree is a Japanese blueberry, a kind of a mid size magnolia looking kind of tree. And then a series of strong buffers along all property lines. In this case, it's a series of Clusia some bamboo, um, internally it's a mix of bamboo, some wild coffee in the shadier spots, a mass of bamboo, Christmas palm here, a triple trunk kind of 12, 14 foot tree. And on the north side, a series of variegated chaflera, yellow green bush for some color contrast, some wild coffee, um, clusia, bamboo, and so on. Then along the alley, we've uh, incorporated two powder puff trees flanking uh, each corner. In the center is a Christmas palm, so from a a backyard perspective, it's nicely landscaped property as well. So pretty heavily shrubbed out. The front yard is a fair bit of lawn. And in the right of way, we've left that all as lawn at this point. So, thank you. Staff report. Did you want to ask any questions of petitioners before we give the staff report? Any questions? Um, Where, I'm sorry, you said the powder puff trees are on the, the top and the... The uh, upper left corner, the little red dots up there, and then the lower, upper, yeah, upper left and lower left, and then lower right. <coughs> oh, that's wonderful. I love this tree so much. The only specimen that I've seen is in the moorings by my office, and so I'm so excited that you're using those in those corners. Anyways, more of a comment than a question, sorry, but thank you for identifying those for me. Okay, good morning for the record. Leslie Dolmer with the City of Naples Plain Department. My resume and qualifications are on file with this petition and I have been previously certified as an expert in planning and zoning matters before this board. 
Um, this is an application for final design review for um, two single family residences with a unified architectural theme on the property located at 845 11th Avenue South. The background on this particular piece of property, it was originally developed as a four unit condominium building. Um, and those structures were demolished in um, 20, uh, uh, 2021. And uh, the board considered the preliminary design review petition, which was 21 DRB 28 at the August design review meeting. Um, and um, approved that petition subject to the following conditions. One, that the petitioner complete the site plan review process and be found sufficient. Um, that the petitioner um, obtain city council approval for, for a subdivision replat um, uh, zero lot line petition, which is necessary for the configuration of these two houses. And three, that specific building materials and color palettes would be provided with final design review submittal. Um, the, uh, the property completed the administrative site plan process and then just last week was granted city council approval of the zero lot line development and they brought forward this final design review submittal. In the course of uh, the review of the, the project against the criteria, we identified and recognized that um, the uh, specific building materials and color palette details were not provided with this particular submittal and nor was a lighting plan provided. And so we have identified those as, as missing documents that should have been provided with the final design review. Um, and I'm not sure um, how the board would like to proceed with that level, that level of detail. We do have criteria related specifically to those things um, with respect to those materials and the lighting. Um, so let's see. Um, with the exception of those criteria, the, the otherwise the project did substantially meet the criteria um, that are provided in section 5241. Um, we would recommend um, one of the conditions of approval is that at the conclusion of construction that the landscape architect provide um, a letter of compliance certifying that the landscape is installed. Um, landscape and hardscape is installed consistent with the approved plans. That's one of our recommendations of uh, recommended conditions of approval. Um, and then it's up to the board on how you want to handle the building materials, color palette, and the lighting plans with this particular project. Okay, thank you. Um, Luke, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I, I always like seeing these projects. It's kind of a neat way. It's, it's, a, it's attractive to pedestrians and bicyclists on the street. It's a neat way to kind of bring the scale down and, and um, just have some unique views from the streetscape. So I, I think the design's really good. I, I, in my opinion, the, the, it, it's, it, are the colors in the renderings and the lighting that those are what you're going to use. Yeah, those those are accurate. Um, we, we can submit like a sheet for this that spells out specific colors for mm -hmm. each house and has a cut sheet for the fixtures. If if we can just get the okay so that they can start construction, we can submit that. If we've got to come back for that approval, we can. Or yeah, the renderings are properly yeah, illustrated. I mean, the renders the do. renderings show me what you're doing, so okay. I'm okay with that as long as it coincides with that at the end. That maybe maybe we can make that a condition as the final landscape. One of the yeah, one of the things that um, the reasons we ask for that is first to to ensure that the materials are um, consistent with the the materials you know compatible in the neighborhood and the area. Um, it also helps when we come time to do our final design review inspection. If we see plans that show, if we show generally the the, the, the house is white, but if we go out in an inspection and suddenly it's like a cream or a pink, and we're like, well. They didn't give us the exact color. Maybe that was a rendering issue. So that's why we really want to try to get those specific materials. Um, and then also that is, like Erica said, that's something that we review when that building permit comes in. Um, I think MHK can attest, I will reject building permits if I don't have the material sheets that you guys have reviewed and approved showing me that, that level of detail. And so um, we want that just consistent across the board so that it, the review process goes easy, the inspection process goes easy, and then their project can just skate through the process. Okay. That, those are really all my comments. It's a good project. There's a lot of thought behind the, the landscape and the design, so it's obvious and good job. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm also a big fan of, of these, these projects as well. I really love the accessibility on each end and the flow, and um, I appreciate how you guys have taken extra thought into um, keeping the palette unified, um, and then the architectural elements are the uh, defining factors. I do agree. I think that that's a step that's like very tempting to skip out on the materials 
um, the material selections and the lighting plan. And I think um, we have to, in fairness of the process, we're going to need to grant maybe a continuance. Is that our option? Or could we Make grant it conditional? Conditional. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll circle back to that. Um, I think if I remember correctly, we were trying to do maybe one darker, one lighter at, at the preliminary. And I, and if not, if I'm getting them crossed with another, I really like the unified look. I think that the, the unified palette is, is really successful here. Um, and you tell two different stories, but you don't think they're connected, but they are definitely belong together. Um, that is the only comment I have. Would you like to continue? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I will echo uh, Chair Billick's comments just in terms of you know, the process you described and just in terms of fairness to all practitioners and in terms of understanding that renderings can sometimes be a deviation from the actual materiality. I agree that that should be a contingency, you know, contingency so we can just be 100% certain, although I agree with Member Fredrickson that y'all are pretty well established in terms of how you represent is what you give, so I also understand that comfort level. But for the process, I think it makes sense. You know, functionally, I think um, these houses are very charming, and they're like, there's a lot, like there's like lots of stuff, but it's harmonized through the fact that the color palettes are the same. So you can do a lot of different things, but if you don't harmonize it while well, you're dead in the water, but y'all really pushed and pulled and really articulated the buildings to be, you know, sisters, but not twins. And it's elegant by utilizing, I don't know about the, I don't think I'd prefer the dark and light. I like that harmony of color to help kind of create one experience rather than two, even though it is. so. Yeah, nice work. And the landscaping, I think, is just absolutely wonderful. I love the, just every concept about how you're engaging, you know, the hardscape and the pervious and how it integrates with peekaboos of the grass. I mean, it's sophisticated, and the palette for the plantings is beautiful. It's really going to be a compliment. So nice work, y'all. It looks good, really good. Mike? I have a really technical question. Um, how are you tying in with the existing sidewalks? Uh, first of all, are you tying in? It looks like you are, but um, let me come back. We, we abut it, so the sidewalk runs through us and we just touch it. And what's the material on the, our, I mean it's. Our, our driveway is pavers, uh -huh. sidewalk is concrete, likely destroyed during construction, they'll have to replace it. With the concrete? Correct. Okay, uh, you're not going to put pavers or anything. We, we had not discussed it. It is something we can look at. Um, the odds are, we'll as a as a landscape architect, we'll probably come back. We always tweak stuff during construction, so you have to come back for that. So likely, if the client is so inclined to put pavers in there, the downside when we put pavers in the right of way, these properties inherit the, inherit the maintenance forever. Mm -hmm. So there's a little they have to consider that and evaluate that. It is definitely nicer to have pavers, but we we did not discuss it at this point. Okay, that's the only question I have. Uh, nice presentation. Um, I, I really like the houses. But it's, uh, you know, it feels like architecture, interior, the spaces. And uh, for a small residential home, that's very nice. I, I don't see that here that often in Naples. So my compliments to you. Um, a uh, couple, couple things. Um, the fireplaces with TVs above them. Uh, it could be a nuisance if you live next door and someone's like up at one o'clock in the morning blasting the whatever on the TV, and you know you want peace and quiet. Uh, that that's a concern to me, but uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, uh, it won't, it won't uh, affect my opinion of the project. It's just uh, or my vote. Um, you, you can see, uh, uh, I, I'm uh, uh, right now. I'm disability, uh, disability and uh, I'm starting to uh, experience the landscape in, in new ways that mm -hmm. I never realized before. And uh, accessibility is uh, uh, really on my mind these days. And uh, for one thing, I, I don't know if I could enter this house. I don't know if I could get in. There's a a stairway and or steps and right. I couldn't do that right now 
And if I lived there, that would uh, be a hardship to me. And also, uh, the stepping stones outside, they're, they're very charming. And uh, even my house has them, but uh, I, can't, uh, I can't access them. So uh, I'd just like to comment, I'd just like to point those out, and I'll leave it to you how you deal with it. But um, now that I'm on the board, I think uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, pet interests is going to be accessibility, and uh, therefore uh, I mentioned it. But, uh, good, good project, though. I mean, the stepping stones, those are meant typically for maintenance. Um, so we typically um, have hybridized landscape, hardscape. That's where that comes from. We could have made that a solid walkway, so that wouldn't be a problem. And then as far as accessibility to the building, I think the only realistic thing would be a, a small lift to get one from a lower elevation to the top, because to build a ramp, we'd be, you know, 20, 30 feet of ramp here that would be uh, consuming. Right, and uh, also access to the second floor. It's a whole other thing. <laughs> from, 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 a, from a residential standpoint, that's you know, there's certainly not a code requirement within the residential. Right. But we do have right now two or three handicapped clients that we are designing ADA compatible homes that you know we're moving as, as much as even addressing height of outlets for somebody in a wheelchair reaching an outlet to ramps to even the, the common steps from inside to out on a, on a rear terrace. So we do take that into consideration at the request of a client, but on a single family home, unfortunately, there's not a lot of code required for it at this time. Sure, I understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Because FEMA requires the, the main living floor to be elevated above the ground in most cases here in, in Naples, um, we do often include in these homes, um, don't fit this model, but pretty often we'll have Although there's an elevator in this one, it's not near the garage, but very often we'll have the elevator have a, say, a back door into the garage that brings you up and then up to the main level, and then it might continue on to the second floor. So it's really covering all those bases. You can come in at grade in the garage and then have access to a lift. Yeah, being, being in Naples is home to uh, many um, elderly and disabled people, I think. The code should start considering that, and not that it does now, but I think it, you know, it, it'd be uh, well served to do so. Yeah, yeah, we we do like to address it when when we can. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> any further discussion amongst ourselves about anything on the project? Um, you know, again, I like this project a great deal, but just picking up. Um, on what our resident landscape architect was discussing, you know, I agree, you know, we have property rights of homeowners and those are critical. We don't want to start stepping on that. But in terms of an architectural community, you know, how can we maybe start to think about rather than a one to 12 with a bunch of ramps and railings, what about if we start thinking about a one to 20 slope where we don't need any <laughs> ramps and railings? And what kind of interesting pedagogies and typologies for Naples where our average age is 65 and I'm three generations deep and every one of my family members have some kind of need, but surgery, you know, is there a way to integrate this pedagogy into even residential, even though it goes above the bare minimum of what we're required, you know, so that's a larger maybe concept that I think I fully agree if we can as an architectural community consider these principles of universal design even where they're not required, but we go above and beyond because we're Naples. I think that would be an excellent, um, you know, maybe long-term goal or, you know, something we could educate our clients about and develop creative, interesting solutions for how to deal with, so. Yeah, but overall, I think it's a very charming project and I think y'all did a really wonderful job and I really appreciate how thor thorough your presentations always are and clear, so thank you for that as well. So I'd like to make a motion to grant final design. Wait, I forgot. Is there any public comment? Oh. <laughs> Seeing none. <laughs> Sorry. So, thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to grant final design review uh, for the two uh, single-family residences with the unified architectural theme on property uh, located at 845 11th Avenue South. Um, I'm sorry, um, located at 845, yeah, 845 11th Avenue South. Uh, with staff conditions and to add a condition uh, that petitioner will supply the lighting 
and color palette to coincide with the rendering. Yeah, so the current, the current conditions in your resolution reflect that a uh, uh, petitioner will provide specific building materials and color palettes in a lighting plan. And um, in the language that right now says for final design review. So when, when would you like those to be provided? Do you want them to come back and present those to the board? Do you want them to provide it just to staff? Yeah, for, for my motion, I'd be okay with staff to make the, the decision, you know, the, is, is the palette they're supplying, does that coincide with the rendering that we, we reviewed? Okay. Right? We, we could submit issue. that today before, before the motion's actually signed off on, if that helps. It's, it's the board's, it's the board's right. if you're well, comfortable with that's that being my provided. Motion. I'm staff. comfortable with staff. You can look at the rendering and say, okay, these lights. It's not blue. Like those Good. Lights. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm comfortable with staff making that, that decision. So that's, so the, that's my motion. We, we could amend those that the petition will provide specific building materials and color palettes to staff prior to building permit submittal. And the petition will provide lighting plan for staff prior to building permit submittal. Sure. And then the final condition is the request for the, um, um, com the letter of compliance certifying the landscape and hardscape. From Christian, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll second. Roll call. Member Grace. Yes, I approve. One of you turn off your mic, at least one. I can turn mine on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Member Drapesy. Yes, I approve. Alternate Member Fawcett. I approve. Member Fredrickson. Approve. Member Ryan. Approved. Vice Chair Bullock. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you all. You. Have Thank a nice you. day. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there any public comment in general? Seeing none. Um, correspondence and communication. I just have one comment, something I just saw yesterday regarding a property that we approved and this kind of goes back to our um, whole thing about signage and trying not to approve every single signage that comes before us but keep it in the parameters. But as far as the um, fine mark, I guess it's going to be called the fine mark building on um, 3rd Avenue South and I believe it's... Um, it's a it's a mixed use. It's obviously it's the bank with the condos in it. Eighth, eighth and third, right? Yeah, yes, eighth, eighth and third. Okay. That's right. The signage that they put on the top of the building ensure it's in the parameters, but it is so massive, and I didn't expect it there, and I don't know why. I, I'm gonna have to go back, but I just feel like I, I was just shocked. So I just, I just wanted to bring it up so that when we continue our discussions um, regarding the signage and everything with our, our handbook, I really think that we need to, we need to have more content mm -hmm. at our approval time before moving forward. Even if we didn't know what the bank was, you could say bank one, two, three, but I, need, I needed to see how big that was, the font, the color, you know what I mean? Like, because I wouldn't have been okay with it. Okay, we can take a look at that. Yeah, we'll and I'm not trying to pinpoint. Yeah, I'm not trying to pinpoint anything. It's, but I just know that it's it, they're they're mixed use. It's it's residential too, and it just feels. And we're not in a big city. It's not a big building. I think it's just like what five units and then one I think it's, retail. I think it might be well, what I think two. two. I think it's just okay. Two. So even yeah, it, it's way out of proportion. It's almost it has to be. I, I think maybe when we're revising. The signage also must be proportionate to the percentage of programming within the building. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't That's know. It just price. seemed very, very out of balance. So I just wanted to bring it up. I was just walking, and I was like, "Whoa!" I hadn't seen it yet. I think it just went up, and I was just like, "Okay." So just mentioning it, we don't have to have them change anything. I'm not pinpointing them. Like it's not like that. But I just think moving forward. It's got to be more of like a case by case basis, and and I or at least by the ones that we're presented. I know that every single project that wants to change has to come to us, except every single awning that wants to change has to come to us. So I don't know why there's a discrepancy between that, but I think um, I think it was Erica was saying that if we had every sign change come to us, we would we would be inundated. Was that every month we get so many sign permits? It's Really? Yeah. 
Well, maybe that every time a business changes out, they change their sign. Every unit in every building has its own sign. And it's not just, and everyone change, we can't just be like, okay, if you use the same font, the same size, the same color, then it's fine if it's just the name that changes, like so the I'm, actual letters. I'm not an attorney, but I know that there are a lot of laws about um, signs when it comes to if your logo is a red bullseye, we can't say you you can only do black on this. I mean, no, so no, there's, no. we can't really regulate the color. We can't say signage will only be black on this building because corporations have their have their rights to their logos and stuff like that. So there's we're kind of limited in what we we, we regulate size, we regulate location. location. I'm not saying to regulate size or color or content. I'm just saying for a threshold of what comes to us or not, mm -hmm. if it changes color, size or location, then it comes. You know what I mean? But if it's literally the same. But I think color, the, the tough part is if we bring that to you we could just help them design it better but they're gonna say i'm target this is what yeah it's, it's this font it's this color it's this sign is this is our brand what she's talking about i believe is that is we cannot regulate the content and sometimes the content is the color or the content is the font. design that the font well, i'd be willing to work with them to keep all that but maybe it's moving it to a different location maybe it's inverting it maybe it's scaling it differently maybe it's just something to get we have talked some about help in our discussions about the handbook about on projects that are mixed use where we know we're going to have multiple tenants things like that um, sort of approving a sign program for the building but that again is just mostly going to be location and size. It, it's not. It can't be the. Concept. Well, this would help. Yeah. Location but, but and size on. But this we can. Would, we can. There are, there are a few things we can do on some of those those larger scale. I'm not sure how much we can do on some of our existing buildings. Again. Right. And yeah. I what's will done also is say done. If, if they come in, and our code says this sign can be 80 square feet, we can try to work with them. But at the end of the day. Well, but that, that's fine. Allowed but they have size. to show it like, okay, so if it's 80 square feet, I want to see it in the presentation so mm -hmm. that we can at least help. Yeah. Like, cause it's mm -hmm. just, I think, I think their signage, at least signage location on some of the buildings that we, the commercial buildings we've seen come through lately. Um, it's been inconsistent just showing us where they're thinking their signs might be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that's something we can definitely work on with our petitioners and the yeah. projects that are coming forward. Yeah. That's that. I think that's the, that's a great, that's, I just wanted to are mention it because I know, to, and we'll drive past that one after the meeting. <laughs> are we able to incorporate her bad. language about a proportionality to the to the programmatic, um, you know, store space? Well, we can do, we can do that yeah. when we reopen the discussions of the, the workshop or, or the you know the actual handbook stuff. I just I just wanted to mention no, it today right before we forget next time if we have yeah. stuff and it's long and then we go into summer and then it, we all forget. So that's my only thing. Uh, anyone else have anything? I, I do. Uh, yeah. we, uh, back to uh, my early question about the uh, site distance triangles and uh, how I could uh, and when I could speak up to, to uh, discuss that. Microphone. Um, going back to the, uh, my question about the site distance triangles, and, and not that specifically, but uh, uh, when, there, when there is a, a concern like that, when do I uh, speak up? Because I, I didn't feel I could speak up till uh, comments come around to me again. So uh, being new, I, I didn't really know uh, what to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, when I, do I? Uh, when do well, I think I, I can j just being the general contractor on the board, I might be able to jump in and answer this question very easily. Our job is to consider design, and and how it coincides with the city of Naples. Our job is not to judge code. So when by the time we review something, it has already been through, or going to go through, pending s staff, and staff is going to make sure that the that triangle rule is followed as well as all the other codes. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I make this comment a lot, but it's not on this board to, in my opinion, it's not on this board to comment on energy efficiency of windows when they meet code. They've, they've met code, they're allowed to have those windows. It's not really our purview, it's how those windows look and how does it complement the building. So but when, it, when this comes to us, those things have already been 
vetted and, and they've already been approved to a, to a degree i would okay what I would, what I would say is there is a design element when it comes to incorporating site the site distance triangle because it's the it's sort of like the right when it comes to landscape design it's the right plant material in the right location and then I believe you were also men mentioning about uh, there's an element of maintenance that's required in order to maintain that. And so sure. putting that information on the plans at the very least when the plans are handed over to the landscape contractor for installation and then whoever does the continuing maintenance, that, that is something that kind of trips the, at least should trip the memory that the, these need to be maintained in a certain, and that can be done with this in the specs as well. And um, I think if you're talking about procedurally yes. um yeah after the presentation after the presenter gives their presentation the petitioner uh, or staff report the chair or vice chair will you know go down the line for comments i think the problem was we were already in the middle of a vote but yeah it should at for each item there will be an opportunity for each member to make their comments or ask ask their questions um you can ask questions of staff of the petitioner you know of any other experts that we have in the room before the vote, but right. I, I seem to come in too late to interject that because voting had already started, I think. Well, right. and that might have been my fault because obviously I don't normally do this. <laughs> so I think over the last six years, I've had three or four different chairs and everyone kind of directs the meeting a little bit differently. Uh -huh. um, and so I think what we do is everyone goes down the line, whether starting at either end, I know uh, Chair Ruby usually flip flops it, and then everyone says um, what they were planning on saying, but obviously there should be time and I should be like, is there anything else we'd like to discuss so that you can comment on each other's comments before going into vote. I might have just jumped into vote because I just am trying to follow the that, that would That would, that would <laughs> yeah. help. If I may say, when David first made the comment, um, if I might, Please. Uh, um, it didn't come across that you were objecting to it. You just made a comment. Uh, if you'd said, I I would like that included in the site plan, then maybe the motion yes. uh, wouldn't have, would have been amended. When, when would have I, when would have when, I when they it? When they first asked you. Um, first discussion round. With first discussion after I talked, I deferred to you. And then you, you made a comment about the... Uh, because I was with Adrian, I thought it was a graphic representation on the plan that was missing yeah, that I, I just understand. didn't know because we're not landscape architects and, and I'm not familiar. Yeah, understanding. But then so she I, clarified, or yeah. had you clarify, so it... And then the motion might have been amended to correct. include... That is correct. So, so I think the key thing to look out, be on the lookout for, is when there's a second. Because when there's a second, that means That's discussion close. begins. And if you do have something that was not in the original motion, you can ask the maker of the motion, would you consider an amendment? And then whoever made the second would say whether or not their second stands as to the amendment, and then you move forward. So as soon as you hear that, I second it, that's when you can jump in and, and make whatever uh, additional comments you'd like to make. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I just didn't know, you know, if, if I'd be speaking out of turn until, until it come around to my But, um, you know, it's, it's quasi-judicial, uh, so we are a little bit, we're not completely formal, and um, I think your points were, were well received by the others as well. So, so it's okay. Um, yeah. If I can, oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Oh, well, I just have to make one more comment regarding um, the fenestration effort of buildings and subsequently the glazing that is seamlessly integrated within that fenestration effort of the building. There are, as a component of designing architecture, energy codes are a component of that, but they are one minimal base level. And we're not, I don't perceive in my opinion, architecture is not defined by how quick, fast, minimally, you know, how minimal we can meet the code. Architecture is a pursuit that looks at a building holistically. How does it respond? So if we're an architectural review board and not a developer, how fast and cheap can we build something? Those are, that's a bifurcated process of a review board. So in an architectural review board, although there are minimums, we're Naples, and I, th I think it's appropriate to encourage our practitioners to go beyond the definition of architecture of how fast and cheap can we put something up and bring it back to its 2,000-year-old definition 
of what constitutes quality architecture on an architectural review board. And that's why we've got our handbook. So there's, there's code, and then there's the handbook, and then there's the criteria for the DRB. All of that is, needs to be integrated and thought of when, when um, petitioners bring their projects forward to the board for consideration. Right. Yeah. So well, I think it's important to remember that these are highly skilled, highly successful petitioners coming before us, highly skilled architects that have already thought about all of these things before they brought it to our attention, before they've made this petition. I don't think it's our purview to lecture a highly skilled, highly successful architect on if they've thought about these things. Of course they thought about these things, they designed it. Now they may come before us where you go, no, it doesn't look like you did think about these things, but well, I mean, I think it's a little, in my opinion, I-, I I'm you know, aware of your opinion of this Chair um, uh, Member Fredrickson. However, I, you're aware of my opinion that I disagree with your assessment. And I think that architecture should be something on an architectural review board. We look at architecture and not the, the, the minimal building codes or how fast and cheap. So, I think this is probably something more for workshop yeah. day, right? Yes, like, absolutely. Because I, I think that it's important. I know today was a short day and a great opportunity, but I don't feel comfortable moving forward with workshop discussions without Chair Ruby. I think that's that right. Point. So Leslie, I've got two things, yes, if, um, if, if you'll permit me on in correspondence communication. Um, the first is we have um, hard copies of the 4110 master plan available for any board member that would like a hard copy. I know it's also available online to take a look at those documents. Um, we would love your feedback. You can send your feedback to me. I can forward it on to our CRA administrator or you can send it directly um, to Anita Jenkins, who's our CRA administrator. Um, but we'd certainly welcome this board's feedback. Uh, unfortunately, the consultant is not making a presentation to the design review board, which is when when would they be looking? When would you be looking to have feedback? Um, the next, uh, I believe, the CRA is meeting again on June 9th, okay. but I can clarify that and confirm that date. Um, Luke might be able to. Yeah, just, to, just <laughs> now that I'm thinking about just, it. Just as a rec <laughs> just as a <laughs> just as a recommendation, you may want to look back at the video or read the outline or or meeting from the crab last month we can send a link to they did the 4110 master plan and we all our board commented on that yeah. but at least you can you can actually Absolutely. see that, yes. that the full presentation, that yeah, presentation. We'll send a link oh, to, to all the DRB and you can see what comments we made on Perfect. it and then maybe you'll yes, have sir. additional or I appreciate yeah. that that's good so we'll send like Eric said we'll send a link we'll send um, Anita Jenkins contact information and then there's also a hard copy if you'd like a hard copy sometimes yes, I'd appreciate nice a hard through. copy I you like stop by you can stop by our office and we've got one okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, the other uh, the other thing I would like to tell the board is that um, I will send out by the end of the week I will send out the compilation of all of the sections that we've discussed in workshop for you all to review over this the summer of the handbook of the handbook our June DRB meeting is the agenda is long there will not be time to discuss any handbook items at that meeting. So we'll send out that for you to take a look at over the summer, kind of think through it, provide, get ready for some feedback. And then when we meet again in August, we'll talk about the next steps and how we want to proceed with the handbook. So we'll have a little, we'll have a little summer recess from the handbook so we can really get into it and look at what, what we've done, what we think we need to do moving forward. But I'll send that out before the end of the Ms. Week. Leslie, so over the summer, it would be appropriate for us to kind of go through with our red pins and our thoughts and our yep. precedents and kind of mm -hmm. present to you hey this is in a duration that I think could sure. work and then y'all kind of yeah make and you an can email those you can email those to okay. me don't email it to the, the whole board no, yes ma'am I directly yes, to Eric and I and so. um or if you want to wait till you go through the whole thing and just send one document however you want to do it we'll just we'll just flag those and keep okay. them together so we have I'm inclined you know I think the last session chair Ruby and a lot of us kind of discussed we don't want to be you know regulating what you can do with design but we do want to say it's got to be smart you know it has to be common sense so it's like in terms of we kind of discuss how that's best to cheat by showing diagrams rather than images because sometimes people oh that's what that means so I have to build that exactly you know over the summer would it be appropriate you know for me and a team member to just start on thinking about how those diagrams might look or is that a separate 
effort. I would hesitate to defer, have you devote too much of your time to that until we have a discussion about the handbook in its entirety. Perfect. I think we have talked about diagrams. Diagrams are immensely helpful. They're really helpful for staff when we have people come in and ask us questions. What well, does this mean? A quick, quick we can show them that, but like, I don't. Oh. I don't want you to spend too no. much time well, on I that until we're that. further That's in the process. That's why I wanted process. to ask. So I yeah. appreciate that. Okay, yeah. perfect. And like Leslie said, the June twenty second DRB meeting is long. We have a lot of items. This always happens oh. right before recess. Mm -hmm. Who's the big ones? Do we know? Um, what's up? Are there any big ones or is just a bunch of? Um, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of items. All right. So be so prepared. Be prepared. We'll buy you lunch. Right. Y'all yeah. are amazing. We need to be buying you, you <laughs> girls lunch. We'll provide uh, lunch that day. and <laughs> We are adjourned. Oh, wait, wait. I have one more thing. No, I um, oh, sorry. I just want to, okay. I just want to uh, rebut what Luke said. Uh, we're we're highly highly skilled. Sorry. We're we're highly skilled uh, uh, board here too, uh, not not just the presenters, and um, both both of those uh, proposals. Uh, I didn't see the original one. I was not here. Uh, I saw both in uh, after they were well developed, and. Um, even though uh, uh, accessibility is not requ required in, in single family, uh, I, I, I could have uh, uh, said that they could bring the sidewalk up on the side, which would essentially be a ramp up to the floor level and made it fully accessible for uh, someone who is not able to walk up stairways. So, you know, th there is a way and, and that, that wouldn't be telling them what to do. And I think our, our role is to suggest what well, may uh, be possible, and in that in that sense, uh, I think we could be very uh, much more successful. I would echo that point where it's not we don't want to step on property rights, we don't want to step on codes, but we can certainly use our expertise. We are highly trained, skilled architects, professionals in this community, and we can use that to help guide people into what we understand through our education and experience would be a better community built environment built fabric for the citizens of Naples which is our everybody's goal so I I would agree with that that you, you know a year ago before I uh, had uh, my uh, little problem uh, I, I was aware of accessibility and, and I thought you know much about it in every project but uh, once I become uh, uh, disabled what I formerly thought was uh, accessible was no longer accessible to me including my own property Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite a wake-up call, and if we could share our experiences with the design community and the building community, I, I think that fills our role here in Design Review Board. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I agree with Luke, and, uh, but I just wanted to add that, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we don't want to tell them what to do, but, but I think we could bring our experiences in in a helpful way for the community. That's all. Did we say June twenty second was the next DRB? Yes. Okay, is that set in stone already? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to ask for a moment of personal comment. Um, I unfortunately had the opportunity to spend twelve weeks of my life in a wheelchair, and it does it, it puts a different perspective. So, um, thank you. I, I completely understand your comments. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let's move on. Um, June 1st may, uh, may be of interest to this board. On June 1st, the City Council will be hearing an appeal of one of your decisions. Um, this was the decision related to the Naples Beach Hotel final uh, design review. Um, it will be quasi-judicial and it will be a de novo review, meaning they'll be starting from scratch. Uh, so we're going to see how that one pans out. Um, do we and know what was objected to it? Uh, we do not, we have, so other than the we transcript. We approved it, though, right? You approved it, yes. But then, so then. This so was I, Mr. Myers, so who. They had the, 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 um, the session with city council, and then they determined that they weren't going to go through with the process to, you know, not have to resubmit to city council in full. 
Wasn't that? That was part of his argument. However, what city council will be reviewing is your application of the facts and testimony that was made to you based on the criteria that's in your code for purposes of design and architecture. So this um, is a gentleman that was a little. Yes. It's the guy who threatened the entire board. Okay, so this is on June yeah. the 1st, so you'll be hearing, uh, if you'd like to observe that meeting, um, well, you'll I don't see what happens. Well, we can't all come because we aren't allowed to be in yes. the same room. Oh, we can sit in silence. Well, okay. you should not be, we don't want to have any sunshine issues, so you Correct. should not That's be conversing was, one to the other. And um, But I, I thought we weren't allowed to even attend any of the same you like can if attend the meeting. I mean, you okay. have yeah. discuss amongst you, amongst okay. yourselves, or one of you cannot come to the podium, and then have another one of you come to the podium. Correct. So you kind of have a dialogue going, although you're not speaking directly to each we other. We can also watch it live. You can absolutely right. watch it. Yes. And the other item that may be of interest to you is that um, we do have on the schedule the. Um, amendments to your DRB appeals. Um, we've had one other appeal in the recent past and uh, we found that there were some areas of ambiguity as well as some um, language when we applied it didn't go real smoothly. Uh, so uh, that particular, the revisions to the DRB appeal process have been uh, looked at by city council back last fall when it was kind of fresh in their minds. However, it's kind of uh, been put to the side, um, but they have asked to revisit it. It's on first reading, which means that you'll have the opportunity uh, perhaps at your next meeting. I don't know what their schedule is. Uh, your meeting's gonna be on the 22nd, so it might be too late, but they may not choose to even go forward with it. Um, but that might be something of interest to you to watch um, or you know attend and, and view. Um, when is that? On June the 1st. It'll be oh. a Wednesday. And what? that meeting, like your meetings, will be long. What time does that start? The appeal okay, so has the a time certain of 11. 11 o'clock, yes. And I do not have a time certain for um, yes. amendments to your, um, but we could, your appeal rules. But you're really not too involved in the appeal rules. It's just it's part of your And we could give you code. a briefing at the June 22nd on how the first reading of the appeals went. We haven't sent the ad to the uh, un Unless, Erica, they schedule it for second, second reading, reading. It, which they could do on June the 15th, right. at which point it would become come law. But it doesn't really um, affect how you conduct your hearings. It's really more how the city council reviews what you do here. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the changes that's being discussed right now at the city council level, they basically start from scratch as to um, the, uh, the matter before them, just as the matter is placed to you. Um, I think in the past they have also acknowledged on the record that they don't have the expertise that, that you have. So there has been some discussion of when they review your opinions or your decision, that they review everything that you had in front of you and what you did, and if they feel that there was a, uh, an error, then they would just send it back to you as opposed to sitting in your, your chairs and, and walking in your shoes. Oh, so through this pr process, if that is the path that they choose to mm -hmm. you know, be, you know, use our review. Yeah, just review and what they you've say, done. Oh, well, we, we, say, we see a deviation and there, that comes back to us. That's yes. Not, okay, see, I misunderstood. I thought if they went that route, that they would take that and just, they make the final decision, but that actually didn't. That is, that is the current process, is that oh, they would make I the see. final decision. And they, um, in prior public meetings, they, um, at least one, perhaps two council members have expressed oh, that oh. Um, they, they recognize the expertise okay. that this body has. Um, and so that's really the whole purpose of the amendment to the way that the process is done. Oh, that is a separate issue from yeah. the review of the current Correct. appeal, which is um, they will make the final Correct. decision. Yeah, I had I wasn't quite sure, but thanks for clarifying that. I hope that they do bring it back to us just because they've got a lot on their plate and I think we do have a lot of expertise here. You know, so. Anyways. And once once they make their decision, then the next um, step in the event that the appellant disagrees with their decision would be to take it to court. 
Correct. So then we would be back in, in litigation. Did they start mediation or arbitration, or did they go right to litigation? They go straight to litigation, yeah. Because yeah. what, what the city council's decision would be, and I don't want to get too much into it because I can talk about this stuff a lot, uh, is that their decision then would constitute final agency action, yeah. and that's the ticket to sure. go into the court process. Okay. Is that a jury? No, it's okay. generally by the okay, court. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. But Luke, about that solar sh Welcome to the City of Naples Airport Authority Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Thursday, 19th of May, 2022. I would like to call the meeting to order. If you wish to address the Board of Commissioners regarding an item listed on the agenda, please complete, complete a speaker registration uh, form available at the rear of the room and hand it to the executive assistant uh, Ms. Menard, prior to consideration of that item. We ask that speakers limit comments to five minutes and that large groups name a spokesperson wherever possible. <clears throat> All written, audio, visual, and other materials distributed to the board or staff during this meeting will become the property of NAA and will be a public record. Thank you for your interest and participation. For the benefit of the audience viewing this meeting, I ask my fellow commissioners, staff, legal counsel, and any presenters to speak directly into the microphone. For the benefit of the presenters, the meeting is being recorded and will be available for viewing on our website. Lastly, please turn off or silence your cell phones and other devices before we begin. Roll call, please. Chair Dustin. Present. Commissioner Cudahy. Here. Vice Chair Rupert. Here. Commissioner Messer. Here. Commissioner Lenhart. Here. Thank you. Okay. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat>
Uh, on the agenda, Mr. Rosansky, are there any changes? Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, just uh, minor, two minor corrections, which you were provided. The first was to uh, the minutes of the Audit Committee, and the second was a correction in the tabulation of the curfew violations in the curfew report. Okay, thank you. And those have been distributed to us, so we can refer to those. Uh, the, the first item is relative to the minutes of the April 21st meeting. Uh, assuming all have read those, uh, could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, Ms. Cudhay, thank so, you. Second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Messer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next is the uh, May 5th Consultant Selection Committee meeting minutes. Is there a motion and a second? I'll make a motion to approve them. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you. I think that's appropriate since you guys were there. <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, then with respect to the audit uh, committee minutes, uh, there was a correction distributed last night. And I want to just look at that for one second. Uh, OK, I see it. Uh, then uh, I think the question is, can we have a, a motion? So moved. Ms. Cudahy, thank you. I'll second. Ms. Messer, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so uh, the next item is uh, the uh, master plan. Mr. Rosansky, would you uh, present that? Thank you, Chair and Commissioners. I'll be presenting this today as uh, Justin Lobb is under the weather, can't join us today. Uh, so in, in the bylaws, it requires an annual presentation of the master plan. Um, and regardless of the fact that we've spent over the past several years quite an inordinate amount of time on the master plan, we're, we're not recommending any changes because it was just so recently prepared. However, uh, we did want to give an update primarily on some of the cost escalations that we're seeing. Oh, I can go up there. Why don't I go up there and do that? Better from here then with the presentation. Thank you, David. So as you all have seen before, um, airport master plan is a 20 year planning document coordinated with the state and federal governments and the, and the community, of course the city and the county where appropriate. Um, it basically lays out uh, the safe and efficient use of the airport, um, ensuring that runway, taxiway, safety areas, approaches are, are all laid out um, in accordance with federal and state uh, design standards. Here's a brief timeline, which you, you've seen previously. The project started in 20, late 2017. Um, we had a, a tremendous amount of, of public outreach and, and the project um, wrapping up um, towards the end of 2021. We are still yet to present the, the final document to the city council. Uh, the, although the airport authority is the airport sponsor,